So, hello and welcome to this little uh, tutorial series on creating uh, clothing from scratch in UMA 2.0 and Blender 2.76b. This first video is just literally going to look at uh, basic UMA theory and the workflows that we'll be using. So in other words, what steps we'll be following in order to actually create our clothing. Now before we continue, um, a few things I just want to point out. This video series is basically going to cover making basic legacy style assets so in other words um, there'll be a normal map and uh, here we go memory fails me a diffuse it's always awkward when you start to record these things um, but there will only be two essentially picture files we'll be using both of which I'll explain later on rather than the four which is used um, in PBR which is the newer shading style um, we're just worrying about basic assets basically on top of that as well, obviously, as you may know, um, Secret Anorak has a wonderful series uh, called A Practical Guide to UMA. Now, I will be covering some of the content you need for UMA very briefly, um, just as a refresher, but I would really strongly advise that you watch his videos. Now, what we're looking to go from here, as you'll see, we've got... Um, a lovely little model with an Uma here. You'll notice it's actually missing the bottom half. It's meant to be like a onesie style outfit, but it's missing quite a bit, which is a problem many people in Blender have a problem with. If you look at this one coming up, though, on the other hand, you'll notice that it actually has the leg continuation and everything else. Um, it's all using one model. It's actually not um, multiple models put together, which is what many people work around. I'm going to show you how to make one model which can cover many sections. So the aims for this video at the moment is uh, obviously understanding what UMA content is. So as a bit of a recap, we're going to set up our Blender and UMA, and we're going to establish, as I said, all of the workflows from start to finish. So before we continue, the things you'll need, obviously you will need Unity, I'm assuming you already have that, and you'll want UMA 2.0, uh, at the moment it's 2.0.5. Uh, this can be found easily in the asset store on Unity 3D. Um, You'll also obviously need the content creation package, um, which there should be somewhere on this video, a link hopping up somewhere on the screen. Um, Blender will be using 2.76b for these tutorials. At the moment, it's the most recent, so it's ideal. Um, I'm also going to use Paint.net. It's a free, slightly better version of Paint. In fact, it's actually immensely better, especially when you start using plugins. For now, I'm going to use a vanilla installation, but if you ever are interested in it without wanting to spend the money on more professional pieces of software, it's a great tool. And finally, I'm going to assume that you'll have at least glanced over Secret Anorak's video tutorial. So whilst I'll be covering the content in brief, I won't be going into full detail. Um, so yeah, very quickly, don't forget, first thing we got here is the Unity websites. And again, make sure you've got Un UMA2 there. And just open in Unity, and that's done. Meanwhile, for Blender, front page, Blender 2.76b is right there. And then Paint.net, it's a little bit awkward, be careful of... Um, adverts which every so often slip through which seem like odd little download links it's always in the right hand side says get paint.net etc whatever else so that's that now for the main bit for those of you that need a bit of a recap we're going to look at Anuma Anuma is basically a skeleton to which body parts are attached via various slots so you have to imagine there are essentially seven essential slots which by default should exist for what we're doing we're not going to go into detail about how to change these so essentially there's always going to be a head a torso component which includes arms hands legs feet eyes and an inner mouth now it might appear a little bit different to what's on the UMA wiki but for the purposes of UMA 2.0 these are the main default components you'll see the main five we'll be working with are the head torso hands, legs and feet. We won't be dealing anything with the eyes and inner mouth for all kinds of reasons. Um, for those of you that are rumour experts, you may know this is not also wholly true. Anuma just requires all the bones from the original default rigs to have at least one relevant weighted component associated. So for those of you that are skilled in Blender, you'll probably see that go, oh, I already know what I'm doing, and zip off on your bone. By all means do so. But for those of you that don't understand, the Keep an eye on that because this is how in our uma underscore blender dot blend file you'll see that's how it's divided up. 
Um, the other thing is that you can add extra slots to an Uma. So on top of these, we can add a T-shirt that goes from the torso over the arms. We can also add a hat, shoes. Uh, it's actually possible to add things like trench coats as well, which uh, go across multiple layers. Uh, so a slot which will essentially go over the body, legs, feet. Um, at this point, I'm sure Secret Anorak is having an absolute fit because uh, if you've seen his tutorials in 3D Max, he suggests replacing slots. I'm going to be doing the entire opposite of that. We're going to be looking at actually putting things over the top which uh, for my purposes for example was extremely useful so again as a quick reminder here are the different components the arms I've done in a dark green just to highlight where the arms are but that is all your components so in blue up the top we've got the head or the face uh, little purple dots which are where the eyes are the orange uh, the purple sorry is the inner mouth we aren't gonna touch that ever the torso is everything in green light and dark hands are grey the legs are in yellow and the feet are in orange. So these are where the bounds of each bit are. So bear in mind a few things as we've got that. That's our default shape for a man, for example. And if we want to add clothing which doesn't require the body to be bent in any weird or wonderful way, you can make something which just goes over the top. We don't have to replace anything on that mesh whatsoever. We can leave those slots as is. However, if you want to add something which requires the body to be bent in some way, for example, high heel shoes, or for example, um, a mechanical arm which can't simply go over the top of an existing human arm, uh, you would actually need to recreate that new base component first. So again, if you were making a mechanical arm, you would need to replace the entire torso, perhaps taking the existing torso and editing the arm and one of the hands completely. So bear that in mind, try not to do anything too advanced to begin with. So, now we know what we're dealing with Uma, we're going to look at the workflows. So this is our structure, this is where we're going to begin and where each one will end up. We've got three wor workflows we're going to be using. The first workflow is our original content in Blender, so creating the original content. Our main thing obviously is first of all open Uma Blender dot blend. That obviously is essential, we need to do it. What we're also going to be doing is we're going to select the faces which we're actually going to duplicate. We're not going to make from scratch just from um, random prefabs and so forth. We're actually going to take the existing mesh, copy parts, components, and duplicate them. And then once we've duplicated, we're also going to separate them. So we're going to separate it entirely from the existing body. Once we've separated from the existing body, we're going to edit that duplicate to meet our demands. We're going to enlarge it, we're going to add or remove sleeves, make cuts where appropriate. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to do something called exporting with the rig. And we're going to export it as an SE 6.1 with a forward Z. Now, a lot of this, if you're new to Blender, will mean absolutely nothing. Don't worry about that. I'll go into more detail. But for those of you that are experienced with Blender, again, you might see this and be able to completely skip the next video. Um, after that, we're going to look at setting up the model in Unity or in our rumor. So, with our model exported, we first need to configure our model. We need to make sure it's got all the required settings, and there are a few things you do need to adjust. From there, we're going to create an UMA prefab. Um, if you haven't done this already, uh, this is essential, but you may have already done this following one of Secret Anorak's tutorials. It's a prefab with a slot library, uh, overlay library, and so on and so forth. What we're going to do next is we're going to create a slot and it's actually, for those of you that have never done it before, possibly a bit counterintuitive to what you might think is required, but actually it's a very simple and quick process. Um, slight problem, you'll have to repeat it any time you edit a model, but we'll talk about that in a future video. We then add it to our slot library, so we create the slot, we create the component itself, so for example a t-shirt. We then add it to our slot library, so it now can be called from script as a part of our Uma. And then that is in fact our last step, we call the slot on an Uma. And once we've done this, we will have a lovely model in the game, but we won't actually have any design, we won't have any textures or anything like that, which brings us on to our final workflow. Our final workflow looks at textures, materials and overlays. So what we're going to look at is creating a basic texture from a new v, uh, UV map. Uh, we'll have already done this as part of our first workflow. Uh, you may have noticed it in the text. Um, 
and there'll be a whole explanation as to what a UV is later if you have no idea what that is whatsoever. Uh, beyond that, we're going to create an UMA material. Now, an UMA material is different from a Unity material. They're, two, they're not entirely different things, but they are different. They are set up differently, arranged differently. And what we're going to look at is a legacy format, which is a basic two-channel um, material, which uh, has a diffuse and a normal. Which brings us on to our next step. We create an UMA overlay. This overlay goes over the top of our material and essentially tells us where our diffuse map and our normal map for shaders are. And then after we've done the overlay, we simply add that to our overlay library. So you'll remember I mentioned the prefab uh, library earlier had a slot library and an overlay. So this time, unlike Secret Anorak's uh, first tutorial, there'll be an overlay library as well. And then finally, we call the slot on the humor, and at this point it should look prettier. There's obviously more we can do to it. We can add uh, make it better so it can work with PBRs, etc. But for now, this is where this tutorial is going to take you. So we're going to have a Blender session or two. Um, we're going to have a session on doing Unity and actually getting the model into Unity. And then we're going to follow that up with texturing, materialing, and overlays and so on and so forth. So um, there's actually quite a lot to cover. It's a very simple process, surprisingly simple in comparison to if you were working with 3D Max but there's obviously a lot of content to still cover if you're uncertain about it. So um, I hope that was a suitable introduction because I've never had to do this before for a YouTube video and uh, I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Thank you very much.